While the majority of the world has legalized uh, homosexuality, the countries where it is still outlawed are concentrated in the Middle East. So it goes without saying that the subject remains somewhat contentious, even when addressed in the art form. This week, we're joined by 25-year-old Egyptian-American filmmaker Sam Abbas to talk about his film, The Wedding. Sam, thank you so much for speaking to us all the way from New York. Now, over the years, uh, there have been an array of Arab films about the LGBTQ community. What did you hope to achieve here? Um, well, I made this film because it was something that's very personal to me and, uh, um, you know, it meant a lot to me to, 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 to get the story off my shoulders and so far, we've been screening it, and it's been very um, receptive, and a lot of people are able to identify with it. So it's been it's been very refreshing. I feel like I've already accomplished what I wanted. How, you know, to tell a story that's personal to me, and then to see that people are identifying with it is is like a bonus. So, what kind of feedback has it had in the region, both positive and negative? Well, it's mainly positive, and that's because the, the screenings in the Middle East are RSVP, they're invite only. We have a certain system where not everyone is invited. It's very strict. So the people that are invited are people that are actually looking forward to seeing it. So uh, so that I guess we'll start seeing the negative the people that actually see it that have negative uh, things to say once it's in the U.S., which is December 14th. Now, you just alluded to this. Talk us through the steps that you had to take to ensure safety when uh, screening the movie in the region. Yeah, absolutely. So, for instance, one thing is, like, I myself can't attend, and that's for the safety of myself and the safety of people that are there, if I was to get followed, etc. Uh, there's absolutely no reporters allowed, and that's for... A, a big aspect of that is because it could be unintentional if somebody's mentioning the theater or someone attending, and, and it puts a lot of people at risk. Um, there's a system in which people can RSVP. Uh, if you can RSVP, you have to sign a non-disclosure agreement and you have to provide a copy of your ID, and that's to ensure everyone else that is going feels safe. There's no outsiders, so you can't bring a guest. No cell phones and cameras. You are padded down, and there are two two people of our uh, that work with us that are watching the entire screening to make sure um, nothing nothing is being recorded during so during the screenings. Uh, there is no re-entry, so if you have a bad bladder, you're going to have to wait there for the hour and 15 minutes. Lastly, Sam, what was behind the decision to shoot the entire film in wide shot? Because some critics have said that that creates some kind of distance between the viewer and the actors. It's also a very slow-paced film. Yes, I, I, I'm a huge fan of Asian cinema, and with this film, I wanted it to be very voyeuristic, and I think... By having it on a 16 millimeter lens, it feels like we're spying in. I also have a very intricate sound design where we record not just the actors, but a lot of the New York City bypassers. So then the way we layer it in sound design is I really wanted to allow the audience to either choose to, to, to follow the story of Rami and Sarah, or they could listen to the New Yorkers on the street. Um, so I really wanted you to feel a disconnect and like you're really watching something personal. Egyptian-American filmmaker Sam Abbas, thank you so much for speaking to us here on Middle East Matters.